Hey everybody, Leo Laporte here. I've got something brand new and upside down. It's called an Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch, but it's not how it looks outside that matters. It's what's inside that counts. A look at the new M1 Mac next. Hands on Tech comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass puts you in control of your online life by storing all your unique passwords in a secure, encrypted vault. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Tech is brought to you by LastPass. Allow your remote workforce the ability to do their best work securely without jumping through hoops. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Well, it's finally here in my hands. This is the uh, Apple MacBook Pro. This is the 13-inch model. Apple, as you know, announced... Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, three new Macintosh computers, a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro 13-inch, and a Mac Mini. Uh, I decided to go for the MacBook Pro, first of all, because I wanted a laptop, but second of all, because this had the best battery life, Apple claiming as long as 20 hours of nonstop video watching. Uh, plus, it also had, even though it had the same M1 chip in it as the uh, MacBook Air, because it had active cooling, it actually has a fan, uh, it promised better performance as well. You could probably clock a little bit higher. Now, Apple's never released information about clock speeds. They they barely talked about this chip in the same terms that we talk about perhaps a, an Intel computer. But this is the first example of Apple and a Macintosh running chips designed by Apple. And I can say without reservation, it's as amazing as everybody said. It's snappy. It's fast. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of the touch bar, but I have to say um, the keyboard uh, is is everything that uh, it should be. It's not that horrible butterfly keyboard. I mean, maybe they're calling it the Butterfly 3, but it's got decent travel. It has a decent feel. It's much more like the 2020 MacBook Air that Apple released at the beginning of this year. Uh, that's actually what I've been using. That's what I replaced this with. Funny thing, uh, this is identical to the MacBook Pro 13 with Intel inside, down to the parts. In fact, I fix it when it, they took this apart. said it's the same exact fan. But this fan never gets fast enough to hear it. And I did a lot of challenging stuff on this, including building some very complicated motion templates. I had one that ran for two and a half hours to render. Uh, never heard the fan once. Never, never heard the fan. It did on that two and a half hour render get a little bit warm to the touch. Uh, typically, MacBooks get warmest here uh, on the wrist rests and on the back. It was warm. It was never hot, never uncomfortable, just kind of comfortably warm. These chips have a lot of headroom, and they're very, very fast. If I launch native Silicon Mac apps, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's launch the Activity Monitor. That's a native app. Um, you'll see that it, it runs, it launches almost instantly and runs very quickly. Uh, there's no hesitation using this. Even the Rosetta 2 apps that are running in Intel emulation are faster than they are on the comparable Intel Macintosh. These are really, really fast machines. Everything seems snappy. It's not like the older machines felt particularly slow to me. You won't really notice the big speed improvement until you're doing something that takes minutes or even hours. And then you'll notice... Uh, but in day-to-day -day operation, really, the only thing you notice is how snappy everything is, how fast everything operates. Now, one of the reasons it's good to launch this activity monitor is because there's a column here called architecture. And you can see whether the program that's running or the process is running is an Intel process or an Apple process. Almost everything I'm running is Apple because in many cases, the Intel processes don't run all that well. Uh, I am using a few things. For instance, our sponsor, LastPass, they're still running an emulation. But LastPass doesn't need to be particularly fast. It operates just as well uh, in, as an Intel um, Rosetta 2 app as as uh, as it did 
on an Intel native Intel machine. I'm also running SyncThing. That's still uh, not native, but almost everything else is. It's kind of nice to have this activity monitor running in the background because you can see, you know, how snappy, how good the performance is. Uh, uh, here's a Visual Studio Code. This is a beta version of Microsoft's uh, programming utility. This is also an Apple app, and you saw how fast that launched. Uh, the only negative, I would say, here's iTerm, which is also native. Again, launches very quickly. The biggest negative for me is some of the really weird edge case software I use, like Lisp uh, compilers, um, Emacs, things like that, uh, are not running natively and in many cases not running at all. I've actually started to record my experiences, and I'll refer you to uh, my website, leo.fm. I've recorded my experiences um, with software, noting what runs uh, native, what runs in emulation, and what doesn't run at all. Some of the programming languages I like, I mentioned Lisp, Dr. Racket don't run. Some of the package managers I've mentioned um, on hands-on Mac, like Homebrew, uh, don't run. Mac ports runs, but a lot of, in emulation, but a lot of the individual uh, recipes won't work. Um, Docker doesn't work without a lot of effort. It is actually possible. I've, I've found a post where somebody explains how to get it running, and it's a lot of work. But I think this list of programs that don't run natively will slowly shrink over time. It's going to be the weird ones uh, that uh, don't run at all. Most of them will run fine in emulation. But that's something to be aware of. I would absolutely, before you buy this, uh, check to see if the software you really need runs, let alone runs well, runs. If it runs uh, in Rosetta, it probably is going to run well. But it's a little disappointing to me that some of the weird stuff that I use a lot doesn't run uh, as well. So I'm not going to give you a lot of benchmark numbers. You've seen those already. Uh, I don't think synthetic benchmarks are very useful. They just give you kind of a a little bit of an idea that the processor is indeed quite fast. The real-world experience is it feels very responsive, very snappy. I have to say you, you'll you want to check to make sure the software you need runs well. Um, I, I Adobe Photoshop is in beta now in Apple Silicon. Lightroom's coming. But there, it's interesting. There's a whole generation of Mac software that is already ready for M1, things like Affinity Photo and Darkroom. I've been using those. It's really a pleasure to edit photos with that. In every respect, this is very similar to its predecessors. It's a true tone, tone display. It's P3 uh, color gamut. I don't even really need to review it. All the things that we said that were nice about the Mac Pro, uh, MacBook Pro 13-inch are still <laughs> true of this. It's just a little faster, a little more responsive, um, a little snappier and a little more incompatible. I feel like Apple is going to go down uh, an interesting road here because they've locked it down in new and unique ways with Big Sur, even the Intel Macs, Gatekeeper and so forth. Um, they're, they're really doubling down on security, but by doing so, they're also meaning a lot, making a lot of the open source and oddball programs not run as well, or in some cases, not run it at all. And there, and there are some interesting edge cases that are a little disappointing. Craig Federighi, you may remember in the reveal, was talking about how fast this starts up. It is absolutely instantaneous. It's so fast that you you can't really tell. This waking from sleep, you can't really tell. It feels like it was on all the time. You have to do it very quickly to see the screen come on. <laughs> it comes on so quickly. All of that is kind of a, a lifestyle improvement. But it's not like the old Macs were that slow. So I don't feel like, yes, it's snappy. I don't feel like this is like, wow, my life is going to change. And in some respects, the incompatibility is, is uh, also a problem. So I want to amend, you know, there's a, there are phases you go through with new Apple uh, hardware. There's, of course, the initial... Uh, uh, reality distortion field with the announcement where it all seems so exciting. Then reality starts to sink in a little bit, but it's still very exciting the day you unbox it and you say, wow, I've got the new thing. And then over time, maybe some additional reality sets in. And I think uh, I might want to amend my advice to people. 
it is not worth running out to get this right now. Uh, in fact, if you have an, a late model Intel Mac, you're good for some time. It's going to take a while for all the apps to be updated, some of the edge case apps to be fixed before they really run as well. You're also much more locked down. I wonder in the long run if we're going to be able to do things like install Windows in these machines or Linux. I don't think so. Uh, you're going to have emulate or emulation. You're going to have hypervisor and VMware's Fusion and Parallels that will allow you to run operating systems uh, in emulation. But this is really designed to be almost an appliance computer. It's a Macintosh, and there's not much under the hood that you can mess with. It is the way that it is. If you run stock Apple apps or well-known apps like Microsoft Office, I'm running the uh, Microsoft Office here in uh, the uh, beta version, the insider beta, so it's native. Yeah, it's fast. It's snappy. Let me launch uh, Word or Excel here, and you can see how fast it is. But I don't think it's going to change your life. Maybe if you had a spreadsheet with a lot of, uh, of cells in it, it was going to run faster. I think there's also an argument to be made that this is just the first M processor, that there'll be an M1X, let's say, in just a few months, an M2 down the road, maybe next year, an M3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And everything that's good about this, the uh, four performance cores, the four efficiency cores, the eight GPUs, the machine learning built into the core, the digital image processing, all of that is only going to get better. So this is the slowest M series Mac that will ever be made. That might be another way to look at it. There are a few things that are just a little bit disappointing. Uh, if I open Photo Booth, you'll see immediately that the camera on this is still a pretty junky <laughs> camera. If you want, uh, it's good enough for uh, most Zoom calls, I guess. Uh, I don't think the image processing built into it makes it a whole lot uh, better looking. It's 720p, but it's not the resolution. It's just something about these cameras that Apple sells. They're just not the best cameras. If you really want a good camera, you're going to be using an external camera, whether your iPhone or a Logitech camera or maybe even your DSLR. Uh, but this is good enough, you know, for for basic work. It's still a little disappointing to have such a bad camera uh, in such a good computer, such a nicely designed computer. Battery life. Let's get to that because that really is remarkable. Uh, you can see here iStat menu is saying this is a 98% charge and I've got 17 and a half hours remaining. Uh, that's very dependent on what you're doing with it. But easily, I've never got below nine hours on a full charge. And most of the time, it is somewhere between 15 and 20 hours. The point being, using this laptop, I never got to the point where I had to plug it in. As long as you charge it overnight, uh, you can use it all day without even thinking about battery life. That's pretty impressive. Never gets hot. The fan never comes on. The battery never dies. It's snappier. Apps run better. The only negative is not all the apps I use run on this machine. Uh, and that's going to be an issue for some people. Not everybody, but for some people. So always check to see whether your apps work fine on the M1. It's exciting. I think Apple is really on to something. It's everything people have said it is. The decision to buy really is going to come down to whether you need a little bit more speed, whether you need a lot more battery life, whether you don't like the sound of the fans or the feeling of, of a hot piece of metal on your thighs as you type. If those things are bothering you about your current Mac, this is a great choice. But the next generation and the generation after that should be even better. Uh, a couple of other things. There's only two ports here. These are USB 4, Thunderbolt 4 ports. That doesn't bother me. That's fine. Apple bundles a ridiculously low-powered 30-watt brick with this, but you can go out for not very much and get one of the new 100-watt GAN chargers. I use a, an Aki 100-watt GAN charger, and it'll charge a lot faster. It doesn't charge very fast with a 30-watt. Maybe that's all right if you're just charging it overnight. And since you don't plug it in very much, uh, I don't think that's too much to worry about. Definitely, uh, you know, an a plus. Considering this is the very first Apple laptop running M1 Silicon, only a few gotchas. Um, it's, it's a great device. I'm glad I still have an Intel iMac Pro. Uh, and 
Adele running Linux because uh, the development tools I want to use don't run on this. That probably will change over time. Uh, it's just a matter of time before this becomes kind of the laptop, for, especially for road warriors. That's the new Apple 13-inch MacBook Pro as configured. This is maxed out with a 2-terabyte drive and 16 gigs of RAM, uh, $2299. Pretty good price. Apple did not raise the prices. I should mention, 16 gigs of RAM seems like more than adequate for almost everything. I ran uh, Anthony Nielsen, our producer, gave me a big motion file. It took two and a half hours to compile. It used 17 gigs of RAM. It was definitely using swap. I could not tell. It still proceeded in a very quick pace, you know, only bested by an iMac Pro with 64 gigs of RAM. The 16 gigs of this, it does seem low. And again, Apple will solve this in the next generation, I'm sure. But for right now, I don't think that should be cause for concern. It uses RAM very sparingly, very intelligently. And because the, of the unified memory architecture, uh, the RAM is so fast uh, and the hard drives are so fast that even, even 16 gigs, even when you run out, is actually plenty. I never noticed any slowdown because of uh, a RAM shortage. Really nice job, Apple. Well done. And the best is yet to come. Our show today brought to you by LastPass. What is it that makes LastPass so unique and vital for your business? Well, for one thing, IT and your security team can take back control of password security. They'll have the control they need right from a central dashboard. And you can customize admin privileges, ensuring that any given administrator only has the right level of access. Plus, you gain company-wide visibility that shows you how well your company's doing in password security. There's over 100 policies you can leverage, and there are advanced security features, including multi-factor authentication. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. And that's it for the new Apple M1-based MacBook Pro 13-inch. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining me. One more twit? Well, you got to check out iOS Today. That's the show where Leo Laporte and I cover everything you need to know about iOS. It's the best apps, the best games, and everything you can do with your iPad, your iPhone, and your Apple Watch, plus Car Kit and so much more. Twit.tv slash iOS. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands on Tech.